worried about your food supply? I know that if you just turn on the news, watch some video outlets, and just see the news that they're streaming through the screens to show you like how important it is to prep things, how important it is to stock up on things and food because there's gonna be a shortage of things and how you're gonna go to the store and there's gonna be nothing there and it just makes a mama go, am I gonna have enough food to feed my babies? You can watch those news outlets, you can talk to people, you can let fear tactics set inside of your life and you can worry, worry, worry. But it does nothing for your life. So the best thing you do is go to the Word of God. And what does the Word of God say about fear and worry, about food and things for your body? It says in Matthew 6, 26, Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather the crops into barns. And yet your Heavenly Father takes care of them. And he keeps feeding them. Are you not worth much more than they? And so who by worrying can add one hour to the length of his life? He's like, why are you worried? Why are you worried? And then you're like, okay, well that sounds easy, God, but then how am I gonna get food? If you keep reading down, scroll down at the bottom, it says on verse 33, but first and most importantly, you wanna know how you're able to make sure that you have enough food? Is it having the best prepper closet? Is it having all the food stocked up like you watch a lot of people do? And there's nothing wrong with having reserves. There's nothing wrong with providing for your family, but don't watch things and go, I don't have that. I'm barely putting enough food on my table for my family for the eat, but we are eating. So that's a good thing. So don't watch things and long for and wish for. If that's something that God wants you to do, He will put it in your heart. He'll provide the resources and the finances to do that. But if He doesn't, this is the verse that you need right here. But first, this is how you do it. This is how you're able to do those things. But first, and most importantly, seek, which is aim after, strive after, His kingdom and His righteousness, which is His way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, and all these things will be given to you also. God is going to take care of you. He is a good God. You are struggling with things. If you are going through things and not knowing where to go, and you're maybe just crying out to God and you feel like he's not answering, let me give you a tip of something I've learned over the years. I'm not a perfect person. I'm not even a perfect Christian. I fail in things. I learn things. I'm learning things still. But the first thing that I have learned that when I'm struggling with things in my life and maybe not having enough of something, when you're having lack and you're having things that are not like taken care of because it's it's God. God wants you to have things. He wants you to be able to feed your babies. He doesn't want your kids starving. He doesn't want you to go without. That's not a testimony of Him if you can't take care of your basic needs. So I always look at myself and I say, okay, God, I'm sorry. Is there something like I, you like become humble? You know, the one thing that God cannot use, pride. He cannot use a prideful person. God can do a whole lot with a whole lot of people. Do you know that God can do anything? He is a pretty cool God, but he cannot work with a prideful heart. That is one thing he cannot work with because that person just thinks they're too good, thinks they know it all, thinks they don't need God for help. So first thing you do is humbly, humbly come before the Lord and say, hey, Lord, is there anything in my life that I need to look at? Is there anything I need to repent of? Is there anything that I need to ask forgiveness of? And you know, you know my heart, you know what I'm going through, you know my struggles, Lord. So I'm asking right now, Lord, for, for forgiveness for things I've done. Lord, if I need to make right to somebody, Lord, help me make it right. And then Lord, also right now, I wanna be able to be secure in feeding my family. I wanna be able to be as secure for doing what I have to do. And if that doesn't mean stocking up a big giant pile like I'm seeing people do, then Lord, I'm gonna ask that you provide enough to fill my baby's bellies and myself so that we will not lack and we will have sufficient. And just like it says in your words, and then you hold on to God's truth. When you're praying and asking and you're believing for things and you go to the word and it says, and all these things will be given to you. And then you know what you are to do? After your prayer time, you get up. And what do you do? You start doing things His way. And you seek life His way. You do the character of God. Your attitude is God. It's not the, oh, I'm not going to make it. We're not going to have enough. No, it's just not going to work out. And, oh, I knew He wasn't going to do that. No, 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 no. You start right away and you go, nope. God says He's going to take care of me. I am worth much more than the birds of the air. Surely He's going to take care of my family. That is the attitude you have. You don't get on that attitude of the woe is me. You don't get on the attitude of he's not going to do it for me. I'm just not worthwhile. I'm not good enough. You know, none of us are good enough. But you know what? God sees your heart. And when he can look at your heart and know that your heart is humble and seeking after him, he can work with that. He can work with that and take care of all of your needs in your home. This goes beyond food. It goes beyond everything else that you need. This is what you do. You come find some scripture that lines up with the things and the needs in your life. So don't struggle about food. Don't worry about food. 
says, yes, it sounds easy for you to say because you're not struggling with food. Well, there was a time in our life when we did struggle with things. You know, we have a lot of children and guess what? The times were not good like they always have been. We've been through the economic crash. We have survived it. We've gone through it. Maybe through that time we weren't able to have, you know, a meat potato and a sides or some of our favorite tasting foods or maybe not a lot of snacks. But you know what? God provided food for our belly. No one starved. I say that all the time. Sometimes I had a $30 bill and I was like, this is all I can I can use. I remember going to the grocery store and going, at, like this is before you had grocery pickup where you get add up the amount where I had to, I took a little calc, I tried to do a calculator, but it was hard because I had a bunch of kids and then I mentally added it up in my head and then I got to the checkout and it was too much. And I remember I had to put a few things back. Been there, done that. And then you know what? The little food that we had, I was able to be make a bunch of meals, be creative. The kids sometimes ate and they're like, this is our favorite. I'm like, you know what? That's okay because this is what God is providing tonight and we're going to eat it and we're going to have a full belly and be fine. And guess what? We were and nobody starved. No one ever went to bed with their bellies hungry. But it starts with a heart of humility. All right, God, I'm sorry. What, what is it? And it's not that you need to be sorry for everything, but it's just check yourself. Make sure that there's not something you're missing because sometimes we get that rebellious and it's like, you know what? I don't deserve this life. And, you know, it's because of this person. It's because of this person that, you know, it's this political party. It's because of these people in power. No, you know, stop blaming. Like, God is bigger than the people in the political powers, you know, that is in our world. Yeah, God is bigger than that. He can take care of every single person's needs, but coming to Him humbly, and repenting, if there's anything to repent for, asking for forgiveness and just showing that heart of humility and love and just, all right, God, what do I need to do? And he'll track you and show you, I promise you. You're not gonna have to worry. That's one of my favorite chapters in the Bible because it talks about, and at the top of it, it says, the cure for anxiety. And I love that because it's so true. It's like, what, what is the point of worrying? What is it gonna matter? It doesn't add time to our life. It doesn't do anything. So if you could just give those cares to God and not worry, that's a beautiful thing. I loved it when I was going through a time in my life way back in the day, way back in the day when we struggled because we, you know, we're learning and going through life. And I had gotten a little porcelain bird and it was a little a nest, like a, it was obviously like a fake one with the nest. And I put that in my kitchen on my shelf. And so certain times, you know, as you're sitting there, because as you sit and just like, don't, if you, the more you sit, you have time to think and you have time to dwell on things. And that's never a good thing. Get some praise and worship music on, get your thoughts on some good things, and, you know, start speaking some encouraging words get in your Bible and read but when you think sometimes it's really easy to let your mind drift and the enemy just loves that so you know what I was able to look over and, and look at my little bird and I was like you know what Matthew 6 26 that's right God is gonna take care of me he's gonna take care of me and all of my kids and if you keep reading on there's more it's clothing it goes on to the um, the lilies in the field and how they don't worry about their clothing I'm gonna take care of you and I still remember going through a time like that and thinking how are we gonna have enough money for these things and it was just because our economy had crashed and there was such a bad time for everybody and you know what God provided in a mighty way and I was like wow it's, just, it's beautiful seeing when you come to him and you ask him and you come with that humble heart just how he will do it so will you let God do a miracle in your life it might not be a miracle of raising you from the dead it might not be a miracle of curing you from any disease which he can do but you just need a miracle in your life you need a God in providing God your provider because that's what God wants he wants to provide for you and, and help you he wants you to look to him for your providing and if you do that put that trust in him watch him do miracles in your life that's what I would do get yourself a bird get yourself a little porcelain bird at the dollar store <laughs> put it up on your shop and go look at it every single day and be reminded you know what I'm gonna be taken care of I am worth far more than the birds of the air and God loves me and he's gonna take care of me so have a beautiful day and I'll see you again tomorrow bye